Hello, my name is Eric Studio, and today I want to show you how I designed and illustrated this org. And also, I haven't prepared any text for this video, so bear with me if I'm mumbling. And enjoy watching! So basically the whole project started a little bit randomly, because I was playing with Art Breeder, like the AI generated stuff, so you move sliders, you choose images and it will result in some images. So basically I just played with it a little bit more, painted over some sketches to make some quick concepts just to see how the workflow will work. And it turned out a friend of mine uh, really liked this, this huge guy, so also he told me he needs some sort of a booth org for for his project, Amphisbena, so basically this is an illustration for RPG project. And after sending me some briefs and some brainstorming, I basically started designing him. So the main idea was to create a huge green brute orc that lives on some sort of a steps. And it's kinda dangerous, and it's very like tribal-like, so it's a really traditional orc uh, in a manner. So basically nothing really... Uh, nothing too new is, is basically just an orc so nothing too spectacular in here to be honest but there were some things that needed to be designed because the specification for his face were quite detailed so the basic idea was he needs to have like a wider eyes a little bit more animalistic face no nose big fangs on on his face which is kind of typical but it still left a lot of room for searching some interesting forms and that's why, as you can see, I started basically here doing some symmetrical sketches to basically explore the, the faces. So, uh, so I guess, yeah, it's nothing too spectacular. I was looking for something pretty rough, like to throw the, the animalistic side of every orc. So I was playing a bit with the shapes, with compositions, with, with distances of everything, and later I just developed the, the idea further. And after making some more sketches, I guess I stopped around at 8 sketches of faces, or 9 or 10, something like this. I guess this will be 8. I chose one I liked most, and after choosing the one I liked most, I basically tried developing it further. So for this kind of stuff, it's I think it's quite easy to make. Like, as you can see, you can do a lot of them really quickly, especially if the face is symmetrical at start. So, if you can, and if you are doing some sort of a design, I strongly encourage you to, to try doing this, because one, it's fun, and two, you can quickly search for some ideas. And some of these sketches maybe won't fit for the orc I'm doing right here, right now, but I guess they will fit to the other characters that I will have to have to design or illustrate, so some of the faces are really fit for some trolls, all orcs, different orcs, so it's all, I guess almost everything of, of the sketches will be used at some point, or maybe for some close-ups to, to show different faces of this current orc tribe. So after like taking the sketch I liked most, I decided I will um, try to make some variations for it, so after searching and after liking like one form, I tried to develop it further with a little bit more details. So as you can see in here, I just basically added some details, changed some faces and everything was done with symmetry. So I'm really glad it, the, the Photoshop finally has symmetry for quite some time right now, but it still was late for the game. So it was really convenient to draw in symmetry. Like in this case, I will do the technique where I paint over traditional drawing, but all the concepting I decided I will make digitally, digital, digitally, because it's just quicker and it allows me to explore a little bit more. So the more and the quicker I can explore later, it will be basically easier for me to draw everything properly. So for, as you can see, for every, every face made, I was developing the whole idea further and just changing, switching, moving parts to, to left to right to see if I can get maybe something something a little bit more interesting in this case. So I guess I will repeat myself a little bit because this video will be kind of long and I don't think there are this many things I can talk about. So if I will repeat myself then, then sorry. And I think I could 
talk a little bit more about the the technique that I'm using uh, the the whole uh, and in here I'm just sketching some uh, some poses to see what will feel best so basically the idea was like recently uh, when I started doing some paintings I was like kind of missing the traditional drawing aspect of, of everything so all the digital was kind of boring to me for the time and I tried doing some illustrations where I basically designed everything digitally then made a, then made the traditional drawing and then I scanned the drawing and just basically painted all over it so it was just an experiment to see how it will work out and it turns out it was really fun to do like it was really interesting technique for me because i really enjoy drawing tra uh, in traditional medias so combining like this combining these two worlds was really fun and i really enjoyed this process and i think i will try to make some bigger or more complex illustrations like doing this stuff and after doing like three or four three exactly characters uh, with this method i decided i will try to record the whole process to to show you guys how, how i approach this thing so after choosing the pose i really liked i grabbed some references because the setup was kind of hard for me because i'm not that good in in terms of anatomy and later i will show you why so also thanks for these beautiful photos of thor because he basically fits pretty much perfectly for the, the whole idea of how this orc should look like just the head should be a little bit smaller but for the body type it was basically exactly the the thing that I was looking for and it's also one of the most Im most important things for me is to use references because like I can try to draw everything from imagination but sooner or, or later I will be stuck at something so I usually tend to develop a, a habit of using references, like I will uh, search for some references and try to basically learn from them on the spot, especially since I'm experimenting with this illustration, so like I can learn something new. And in here you can see the drawing, I unfortunately cannot, was not able to record how I was drawing this traditionally, but believe me it's nothing special and after scanning it i basically started drawing doing everything like i would paint normally so it basically f serves me as a base right now right now so i am just coloring it to establish some basic colors i'm trying to uh, i'm trying to show some different materials that are in here and to place a little bit with uh, shadow and sun and light setup so it's once again nothing nothing too special uh, i don't think there is like a one method of of doing this kind of stuff because once again it was like a lot of experimenting but in this case i discovered like the multiply layer style works best for adding colors and simple textures for the whole painting and also it's one of the reasons why i wanted to do it traditionally because of the texture of the of the pencil like i really like the texture like it gives this rough feeling for the whole drawing and i felt it adds a little bit of visual value to the whole painting so in this case i was asked to to try to match the light setup and the rendering quality for with this orc on the right side it was done by Simana Vlesavlevika or however you read this i probably buttered it pr tra tragically and i have no idea if it's he or she because i never heard this kind of name or surname uh, but basically that's why I, it's in here so i just take it as a reference and also on the top you can see the 3d head of an orc i recently started learning the brush so i decided after like if i can learn something new from this illustration i will try to model the head based on the design i did based on the concept and this way i can learn some 3d just experiment with the technique and after modeling it i just basically put it in the screen and try to copy it just basically i try to study it to see how it will work and how it will look in perspective properly so one of the the so yeah it is basically like a little bit of more, uh, more experimenting so i could i could learn something new yeah it was nice the brush is not so terrifying as i thought it will be 
so it was not that big of a problem and it was w and it was a really helpful uh, reference because it pretty much resolved every single problem I could have with the face so all the creases all the shadows how the fangs will work in this kind of setup like pretty much 3d resolved every single problem that I could have encounter and it's also one of the reasons I wanted to learn it so I would I would be able to make quicker I will be able to make concepts quicker and yeah also it's fun I also always wanted to to learn how to sculpt and a friend of mine also wanted to do it and he kind of pushed me to to try to make it work this time because I started using ZBrush three years ago or something like this went for one two-day course but I was not using it for like three years right now so I pretty much remember completely nothing and in total I did maybe like three or four sculptures so I decided to try it a little bit more seriously right now and it turns out it's a great help especially for illustrating some faces especially for illustrating some faces because I always had some problems with with painting faces so working with them digitally like in 3d and being able to like sculpt them without getting all messy from the clay because I hate clay I was using clay for some time in, at my university basically academy because it was academy of fine arts and I really hated it like clay sucks and sculpting in 3d is way better and it's way more pleasant so it's kind of allowed me to understand all the planes or the all the shapes a little bit better and for the biggest problem I had with this illustration was the raised arm because it's like the only idea like is the only place I don't really understand in terms how the muscles attach and how everything works in there like I just cannot grasp the the idea of of this place like the whole armpit area and the inside of an arm is basically hard for me uh, and I was kind of struggling with it I tried taking some pictures of me as you can see in here my spectacular biceps so there's not a lot of definition so it was not really helpful but it gave me some basic idea how it should look like but after painting a bit from the photos and trying to flex as hard as possible so I can see actually see some muscles I decided to ask for a for help from a friend of mine so also it's one of the best tips I guess I can give you if you have the possibility just basically ask your friends for help especially if this is some sort of a project you can speak of because there's no NDA and anything so if you hit the wall just basically ask someone who knows better how to do this and later you will see a great sketch made by Naimul Alam Osmani who helped me with the anatomy because he as far as I know he is really good at this this kind of stuff and his sketch was extremely helpful also the ecorche stuff like the legs and the torso comes from Raf Crasetti because I bought his tutorial on Gumroad for figure sculpting to learn human anatomy and this ecorche was also uh, very helpful but once again there was there were no uh, I couldn't find the pose and couldn't pose properly the model so I could see how the muscles actually actually work in, in space so it was really problematic for me but yeah asking a friend for help was like the the key for making this illustration so I had good idea but if someone knows better just ask them there is like no shame in this you don't need to know everything and if someone is, is able to help you then then that's great like it's is the best thing and also i grabbed some photos like cropped them and put them into some small squares so i will have oh here is the sketch of that naimul did like the the overpaint it's really nice and all the small squares are basically some reference photos i found around the web cropped them for the parts that i found really interesting and one thing i basically copied is this circle stuff with face or something and I felt it really nicely fits to the to this design like I felt it will be cool like every tribe of this type of orcs 
has the their own face on or their own idol or something like this that they sculpt and wear on their belts or in the necklaces or something like this and i extremely like this face it it's kind of look like it's from the memes so it's also kind of funny but i just yeah i just copied it copied it so it's also nice reminder that sometimes you just wouldn't come up with some ideas if you don't search for references because if i wouldn't like go through all these photos and search for the stuff i think will help this project develop further uh, i wouldn't like even think about adding this type of of design on his belt like i definitely would add add something on his belt but i guess it it will probably end up with I will end up with some sort of a school or something not too interesting so so yeah and also sorry for my english because i was not speaking english for a pretty long time and i feel kind of rusty and as again if i will repeat myself i know i already said it so just just excuse me i don't pretty remember what i said in this video it's still kind of hard to to record the voiceovers so but i will do my best i will learn i will i guess i will get better with time like with everything so yeah and in, in here you basically can see how the how the illustration goes from this point like i'm just basically sculpting in it adding more details trying to play with some perspective trying to play with hers a little bit with the composition of all the shapes uh, in the background also the it seems from the brief that I got that the orcs are fighting with dwarves. So the guy I'm doing this for asked me if he could hold some sort of a dwarf head. And at the beginning in the sketch, there was only one head, but I decided like, if you are a big orc and you are strong and you want to show that you are strong, you wouldn't hunt down one dwarf, you will hunt down three dwarves. So he has three dwarves that in this case are really light haired light their hair are light i have no idea how to say it differently so yeah nothing too complex and doing these faces was also fun uh, recently i was also studying a bit about the geometry of the faces to make them a little bit more easier for me to to draw and to paint and i was kind of surprised like how easy it felt for me like i remember like one month ago when I was trying to draw some faces, it will, was problematic a bit. Like, I don't think this, those faces are perfect, but I think they are good enough to, to be underst understandable, to be perceived as faces or something like this. I have no idea how to say it. So I think like drawing faces every single day for like month really helped me with all the sketching and drawing. So. If you have a problem with something just basically brute force it and try to yeah if you can do something just just train and you will be able to do something like for me this was the example once again that basically i only need to draw more so i will get better at it it's kind of obvious but i think a lot of people and a lot of artists forgets about it especially if you are doing a lot of illustrations it's hard to see the progress because like you wouldn't see a progress from illustration to illustration but you will see some progress from like first illustration and tenth illustration like you need to make for example nine illustrations to see that you developed something and for me it was also yeah it was also like working this way i remember the first illustration i did with this technique when i was kind of experimenting with everything and it took me a bit longer and the effect was way worse and this one i basically felt like i know what i'm doing from start to finish like i um i had some problems but i know where i was going with this and i was not like thinking hmm, how to get this this certain effect it basically just came came from experience so once again if you are struggling with something just try just try brute forcing it like do a lot of these things it will work out at some point maybe not in the first time but maybe after 40 50 tries maybe it will work for the hairs uh, same i wanted uh, him to have some thick black hair and i just used the 
some branches brush because it kind of felt like a rough sticky like stick like hers like a thick hers hers it sounds weirdly weird uh, so I just basically painted with some sticks and call it a day and named it hers I will have to look it up how to how to pronounce it because it's hard and what more can I say about this one I think pretty much that's all like I don't think there's much more in terms of technique that I'm using in here or maybe later I will discuss a little bit because later uh, when I will yeah I just reminded reminded myself uh, later I will do some concepts of this guy once again because I was kind of feeling like the bottom part is working well it's it looks nice it looks okay for the design point of view but I was kind of missing something happening on the top and uh, with this guy that I'm doing this like the, the guy I'm helping uh, with these illustrations uh, had some idea to paint the body with the white paints so it will basically look more like he comes from sort some sort of a tribe so where the, there is a body painting but I had kind of no idea how to do this thing so I guess in some minutes I will like duplicate this orc onto the new document and we'll try to search for some variations because yeah like you don't really need to have designed you don't have to design everything properly and just illustrate perfect design uh, if you I think at least if you will come up with a good idea like meanwhile while doing the illustration and you will decide it looks it looks better and it still fits the brief and it does not change the appearance of the whole artwork so just roll with it like it's just a better better change so also this was the case with this hand I have no idea how to paint this hand so I took a photo of my hand basically painted over my finger so it looks like I have three fingers and I kind of felt it was one of the best hands that I have ever drawn in my entire life as, especially since I recently also uh, sculpted a hand and a feet in ZBrush from from the same tutorial of Rav Grazetti so it was kind of a little bit easier for me to understand the, the volumes and how how they work in perspective but yeah sometimes the the easiest solution is like the simplest one like the best solution is the simplest one so basically if I need free finger hand I used my useless useless to this day ability of connecting to, to fingers and bending them like it turns out not everybody can do this and it, it kind of baffles me that it's so easy like I don't understand how can somebody not be able to like group their fingers and, and spread them in the middle like it's not that hard but it turns out this useless ability was a really helpful thing in this illustration and it allows me it allowed me to add a little bit more life for the for the whole painting so I think yeah it's great like it's also one of the things many artists forget especially the starting ones like if you need help with if you need a reference for a certain body part you basically can just take a photo of yourself like it's not that hard like pretty much everybody has a digital camera the, the quality don't even need to be good or some sort of a mirror and basically just pose yourself take a picture and you have a great reference for painting so in this case and pretty much in every single case like in every illustration I remember for quite a long time I was doing some sort of a photos of myself where I could see or at least understand the general idea of the foreshortening and how how the whole body will behave in space and even though I'm not this ripped and this huge as this orc if I will take a photo of my whole body in this pose I guess I will understand where are all the bony landmarks and how the muscles more or less will be placed and in here you can see the, the thing I was speaking uh, like two or three minutes ago where I just duplicated it several times and tried doing some more uh, concepts for this guy I f I think I yeah I went with the second sketch with yeah I went with the second sketch I really 
liked how the white paint looked on him also because he will be like all in blood in more or less 30 minutes uh, I thought it will create a new color scheme like a, a nice color palette where you will have a lot of like this brownish green stuff with blacks and a white detail on his face and some reds to, to break all of these colors and also I was thinking while doing this uh, about how he will apply this paint so since he has pretty much a three fingers and the fingers are fat and basically a really thick fingers I thought he will like use them to paint some really simple uh, patterns on him so basically all of the patterns are more or less in the thickness of, of his fingers and to add blood it's really easy thing just basically and also to, to add this this painting it's really easy thing just create a new layer and make uh, multiply multiply for the blood and for the uh, body paint I usually if it's white I usually go with one white layer that is set for color so basically everything is gray underneath it and then I duplicate this layer and set it to overlay so this way it brings all the highlights back and also I am trying not to cover everything perfectly so this way you will have this uh, like how to call this mm, like the, the skin is visible through through the white paint so it gives this a little bit more natural looking effect so yeah I, I guess that's all and in here I also I reminded myself that in the brief there was a part where there's an info that they cut their forehead to show off a bit of their skull it's not too visible in this concept because honestly I honestly I forgot it I forgot about it for the pretty much to this point and and it's pretty much the almost the end of the video but I tried to add a little bit of it it was not too visible but added a little bit more detail to the face so I'm fine with this one and in here I tried to add some sort of a rim light so it will fit a little bit more to the illustration like of the orc that's already in the in the game that's already in the project and it also made the whole like silhouette read a little bit better because I was painting it for the most time on the white background now I removed the white background for the gray one because I wanted to see the highlights from the from the silhouette uh, like from the rim light uh, but it adds a little bit more uh, information about the, the volume of the thing that you are painting so also if you are struggling with showing the volume sometimes adding a rim light can really do wonders and in here I had some problems with the eyes I was zooming out and in to see how they will look like and just went I guess with the orange eyes so I zoomed out and just basically played with sliders for some minutes and I saw this color like it, it looks nice it, it complements the everything and it's not weird looking like the blue eyes were looking extremely weird or white eyes were also kind of weird so yeah the him having this color of eyes was pretty much only uh, the only reason he had this eyes was was accident was like using the sliders and in here I also forgot to give him the the belts on his stomach and his chest and I quickly had to add them after I flattened everything but it turned out okay like I added some details doing belts it's it's also not this complicated it's like really simple shape so yeah I guess I guess that's all so thanks for watching and I hope you really enjoyed the video sorry if I was boring when I was talking I really was not preparing any sort of a text that I will be speaking so it went all from from the moment like nothing was planned so if I bubble sometimes I also sorry and I hope you liked it and you learned something and as again if you have any questions and if you want to to connect with with me or anything just write to me on my facebook page on leave some comments like subscribe and all this stuff and hope you hope you enjoyed it and i hope you learned something new and found it interesting so thanks for watching bye